everyone, welcome back. We're diving into a topic today that's super interesting, at least to me, and I think you're going to dig it too. Sustainability and innovation, kind of where those two worlds collide. Yeah. It's really cool how these connections pop up in the most unexpected places. Exactly. So we're talking 3D printing. It's revolutionizing how we create things. Absolutely. But there's a flip side, right? Less than 10% of those materials actually get recycled. We're talking a mountain of plastic waste. Yeah, and that's where things get really fascinating because we're not just going to, you know, dwell on the problem, but we're going to actually explore some of the amazing solutions people are coming up with. Exactly. And that's what I love about these deep dives. We get to uncover those solutions. And our story today starts with a true innovator, Jason Reynolds, and his company, Jinxbot 3D Printing, right here in Mountain View. They're known for crazy fast turnaround times, high quality prints, top notch customer service. Yeah, they've built a really impressive reputation. They have. But for Jason, it's about more than just churning out products. He wants to make 3D printing accessible for everyone, turning those like what-if ideas into something real. And he's had some serious success with that. I mean, you look at Jinxpot's client list, Google, Facebook, Apple, Stanford. These are major players who trust Jinxpot to deliver. And talk about real-world impact. They've even printed anatomical models for Stanford, like these incredibly realistic larynxes used to train medical students in tracheostomies. But as Jinxpot grew, Jason, he saw this growing problem, all this plastic waste from 3D printing, and it got him thinking, what if we could close the loop? And that's where his commitment to sustainability really comes in. He could have just ignored it, but he wanted to be a part of the solution. Exactly. And that's where we're introduced to Precious Plastic, this mm -hmm. global network. And their whole mission is to empower people to recycle plastic themselves, open source everything, plans, resources, the whole nine yards. They give you what you need to build your own recycling machines, even start your own little recycling business if you're feeling ambitious. Yeah, the whole Precious Plastic Universe concept is really cool. It's about democratizing recycling, making it accessible to everyone. And these guys are the real deal. I mean, they've got some heavyweight partners, Moa Hennessy, the UN Refugee Agency, even royalty like Princess Lara Faisal. Yeah, it shows you the kind of impact they're having when you've got that kind of support. So he finds this organization Precious plastic, doing amazing things. Right. But Jason, he's not content just relying on, like, these big systems. He wants to get his hands dirty. You know? Yeah, he's all about action, actually making a difference on the ground, and that's where Print Cycle comes in. Print Cycle. Tell me more about it. So it's a nonprofit. That's Jason actually co-founded it with the Precious Plastic Peninsula branch, yeah. and they're laser-focused on this 3D printing scrap right here in the Bay Area. Wow. Closing the loop, keeping things local. Okay, so someone's listening, right? They're like, print cycle. Yeah. What is that? Walk me through the process. What happens to the plastic? Mm -hmm. So picture this. You've got your discarded 3D printing project, maybe a prototype that didn't quite work out, some leftover filament that could actually become part of, like, your next pair of sunglasses. What? Seriously. Print cycle collects 3D printing scraps from all kinds of places. Hobbyists, businesses, institutions, they gather it all up sort it by material type, shred it down, and get this, they transform it into new products. Okay, hold on. This is blowing my mind a little. Yeah. From trash to treasure, literally. What kind of things are we talking about here? They're making some really cool stuff. Clipboards, flower pots. They're even making sunglasses. Wow. Yeah, it's about making sustainability stylish, right. functional. I love it. But here's where it gets even cooler. They're making climbing wall holds. Wait, what? Climbing wall holds. Now, that is thinking outside the box. Right. I love that connection. Yeah, full circle. And that's where Regrip enters the picture. Regrip. Okay, so what's so special about their climbing holds? So Regrip takes these recycled 3D printing scraps from Print Cycle, right? And they're crafting them into these eco-friendly climbing holds. Uh -huh. And I mean, truly eco-friendly. We're talking 100% recycled plastic. So they're diverting waste from landfills. They're promoting this circular economy within the climbing community. That's awesome. It's like not only are they tackling this waste problem, they're creating a product that people actually want. Mm -hmm. And I imagine climbers, especially with gyms and stuff, they're becoming more and more eco-conscious. Right. But right. how do they perform? I mean, are we sacrificing quality for sustainability here? That's the thing. These holds... They're not just a feel-good option. They're high performance. They're durable. They use injection-molded PLA, which is known for its strength. Okay. So they can handle some serious wear and tear. So they're durable. Got it. But are they interesting? Visually, I mean, you know, climbing holes can be pretty cool looking. 
Right. And that's actually one of the coolest things about these regrip holds. Mm. Because they're made from recycled material, each one has this totally unique marbled design. Oh, cool. Like, you just can't get that with virgin plastic. They're all one-of-a-kind little pieces of art on the wall, you know? That's really cool. So you're getting a workout and reducing waste. Mm. Win-win. And they come in, like... All the shapes and sizes you need. Yeah, absolutely. Any skill level, beginner to expert, there's a regrip hold for them. And they're designed to be easily installed on any standard climbing wall, so gyms can just swap them right in. It's just, I don't know, the whole thing's really cool. Precious plastic, jinx bot, print cycle, regrip. It's like they each play this important part in this whole system. Yeah, it's like a whole ecosystem of innovators coming together to like actually make a difference. And it makes you think, right? It does. Remember how we started talking about how little 3D printing material actually gets recycled? Less than 10%. Yeah. These guys are proving that there are solutions out there and they're gaining traction. It shows what's possible. I mean, we all have a role to play, right? Oh, totally. Supporting businesses like Jinxbot, choosing products made from recycled materials, all those choices add up. Absolutely. And, hey, next time you're at the climbing gym, take a second, look at the holds. You might be holding on to a piece of recycled plastic, you know. Living its best second life. Exactly. Thanks to these innovators. It's like everything's connected, you know. Yeah. The materials we use, the choices we make, it all adds up. So for anyone listening, next time you see some kind of waste, think about it. Could it have a regrip moment? Could it be something completely different, something better? Keep those questions in mind. Keep exploring those ideas. And until next time, happy listening.